You guys, it's fun drive time again at the Libertarian Institute. That's libertarianinstitute.org slash donate. Our team is growing and getting better all the time. We just published Lori Calhoun's great new book, Questioning the COVID Company Line, Critical Thinking in Hysterical Times, a great collection of essays that she wrote for the Institute. And we've got five more books in the works coming soon, not including the one I'm working on now, Provoked, How America Started the New Cold War with Russia and the Catastrophe in Ukraine. The great Ted's, Snyder and Carpenter, now write for us. And we've just brought on our new outreach director, Quinn Triggs, to help us all get our stuff out there where people can see it. We run a tight ship here. Your money goes to pay our writers and podcasters to keep doing their work. Simple as that. But we need some. Especially you incredibly wealthy people out there listening. Help me pay my guys so we can continue to set the standard for libertarian thought for the next generation. And write it off on your taxes. That's libertarianinstitute.org slash donate. And thanks. For Pacifica Radio, August 3rd, 2023. I'm Scott Horton. This is Anti-War Radio. All right, y'all, welcome to the show. It is Anti-War Radio. I'm your host, Scott Horton. I'm the editorial director of Antiwar.com, and I'm the author of the book, Enough Already, Time to End the War on Terrorism. You can find my full interview archive, almost 6,000 of them now, going back to 2003, at scotthorton.org and at youtube.com slash scotthortonshow and all the video sites out there. You know. And you can follow me on Twitter, if you dare, at scotthortonshow. All right. Welcoming back to the show, the great Philip Weiss. And he hosts the website MondoWeiss.net, where he writes incredible things, and uh, so do a great many other wonderful writers. Right at Mondo Weiss, you should subscribe to their morning email newsletter. Um, and their speciality is Israel Palestine, and 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 Phil's speciality especially is the American politics of Israel Palestine. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about. So, welcome back to the show, Phil. Hi. Great. Thank you so much, Scott. Pleasure to talk to you. Uh, great to talk to you and great to read your wonderful insights here, as always. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Let's start with the politics in Israel. First of all, Netanyahu came back to power, but in order to do it, he had to align with some people further to the right than anybody's ever had in his coalition before. Did I get step one right there? Yeah, I think that's a very fair statement of it. And, and um, you know, people like to say, hey, uh, Israel, Israeli governments have been right wing and anti-Arab forever. True, true, true. Uh, but this government is more explicit about it, openly explicit and fascistic about it than ever. So, yeah, and Netanyahu had to cut a deal with these religious zealots, fascistic. They're truly fascistic. Um, well, what do you mean by that? You know. You don't just mean corporatism, because that's the way of the whole world. So what are you talking about when you say that? You're right. That's true. I do not mean corporatism. And corporatism has obviously been a big factor in Israel for a long time. I'm talking about people who want to remove Arabs and Palestinians uh, from the West, large areas of the West Bank and move Jewish settlers in there using force to do so. Israel has been doing this for a long time, of course. But they are more explicit about it than ever and saying this is Jewish land. Uh, God gave us this land and uh, we got to move you out. And um, any uh, Palestinian seen with a gun, we're going to kill you. So the, 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 when I say fascistic, I mean the degree of nationalism, of uh, a racial character that is, has a brutal military uh, component to it. Mm. And also they are stripping, you know, part of that is stripping civil rights within Israel, let alone in the occupied territories, but stripping civil rights from Israelis that, you know, there has been a Jewish democracy there for a long time. It's been pretty good for Jews. And now they're trying to strip a lot of those um, freedoms. Mm -hmm. And you're referring to this new reasonableness law? Yes, I am. They just passed that judicial overhaul that uh, essentially guts the uh, Supreme Court's ability to overrule uh, government policies, the checks and balances that you sort of expect in a democracy between one branch and another. Mm -hmm. 
they're kneecapping that. And that's been a shock to these liberal Zionists here in the United States and, and Zionists generally in the United States. Even the American Jewish Committee and the ADL, uh, these uh, uh, centrist uh, Zionist organizations that stand up for Israel at any time have expressed deep concern over these uh, judicial changes. All right. So we're going to talk a lot about the American, especially American Jewish establishment reaction to this in a minute. But on the law, again, to be clear here, this is a thing that people have seen even the nightly news, I guess. I presume they must have covered these massive protests, hundreds of thousands of people. And these are liberal Jews. They're not they're not protesting for the rights of Palestinians. They are protesting against the new Supreme Court law. Yeah. Um, for what, like the last six months or something, right? And yeah. they lost anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's very, I mean, I have to say as a, you know, in terms of massive grassroots mobilization, it's truly inspiring, although there's a very racial component to it. It's it's liberal Jews. They don't care about the Palestinians who've been under the thumb of this, or the knee of this government uh, forever. But yeah, they are really upset about these changes. And they are proposing many of the things uh, that Palestinians have been proposing for many years. These these folks are saying, "Hey, let's choke uh, this government economically. Let's aban- <laughs> let's uh, boycott this government. Let's have businesses, the high tech businesses that have uh, given us this incredible qual- uh, standard of living as high as France or Japan. Uh, let's have those go- uh, those businesses leave the country." Uh, let's, let's do boycott, divestment, and sanctions. Just what Palestinians have been asking for, uh, you know, for, Phil. You know, eighteen years. Yeah. It's just a tragedy to see hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Israeli Jewish anti Semites out there supporting boycotts. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I mean that. That I mean, I know I'm skipping forward a little to the American Jewish response. But one of the responses from the American Jews who are so concerned about this is, uh, excuse, uh, we've been teaching the politicians for generations that it's anti-Semitic to say this stuff. And privately, they, they say everything that, you know, you say about apartheid, but they, they know they can't say it publicly. Well, they've got, we've got to change the indoctrination now. We, we can't say it's anti-Semitic. Yeah, that's what they've been they're telling us forever is that to make these critical statements of Israel and to employ these uh, time-honored uh, tools of um, protest, boycott, divestment, that's anti-Semitic. Yeah, so they are really being hoist on their, you know, they're, they're having this, uh, it's a complete hypocrisy. Yeah, and look, I mean, it's just true that American Zionists, Jewish and fundamentalist Christian alike, and I guess just regular, you know, rank and file Americans believe all the TV propaganda that Israel's our friend and we're supposed to support them all the time. You know, overall, I think support for Israel is probably pretty popular. And all those Americans are essentially helping the worst Israelis betray their own country and destroy it. They're painting them yeah. into a corner where... Look what they're becoming, right? How do you call yeah. it a Jewish democracy if half the population has no <laughs> rights at all and the population of the planet Earth instead refers to it as the apartheid state of Israel? It's like Absolutely. South Africa or Mississippi yeah. under Jim Crow or something like Absolutely. that. How long yeah. is that supposed to last? Yeah, I mean, and, and to your point, I mean, like you and me have been saying apartheid for a long time, and that's what it is. And the human rights organizations have been saying it almost as long as we have it. It's apartheid. But but and and that's where people should be in the United States. And God knows a lot of the young Americans, including a lot of young Democrats, absolutely believe what we say it's an apartheid and, and what the human rights organizations have asserted by facts documented out the yin yang, it's apartheid. But to, to let's just go to the mainstream mindset for a second and give them a have a little good faith in them for a second. They've been saying forever, it's a democracy, it's a democracy, it's a democracy. Well, it's not a democracy, it's just a Jewish democracy. But these things have shocked them. And so they've said it's the only democracy in the Middle East. That's why we support them. Uh, uh, Maybe it's not the only democracy. Maybe it's not even a democracy. So I give them, I'm I'm down with uh, all the uh, Zionist, centrist and liberal Zionist organizations in as much as they are saying they're they're being a little bit honest here. They're saying we said it was a democracy. You no, know, it was only for Jews, but we said it's democracy. And now they've kneecapped that 
uh, the the courts. It's not a democracy, and so, and some of them are even saying it hasn't been a democracy for all those Palestinians. The millions of you know half the population is Palestinian. So, I think you know our it, this is very helpful to any sense of justice in that uh, conflict that uh, people are opening their eyes and. It's bad for Israel. That's the main thing. It's really bad for Israel's image in the United States that, as you say, it's on CNN, it's on NPR, and, and it's even on some of the nightly news broadcasts that this is, uh, you know, these are fascistic measures. And and I do think that it's going to ultimately, it, you know, the Israel lobby that I care so much about, because I think it is the power here. I think that it is shattering the Israel lobby and or, 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 or fracturing the Israel lobby. Sorry, I'm being a little too hopeful there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shattering. Don't get too carried away. But yeah, all right, yeah, it's Inside World Radio. Away, yeah. I'm Scott Horton, um, KPFK <laughs> here, talking with the great Phil Weiss from MondoWeiss.net. Nice, yeah. And we would like to see the Israel lobby shattered someday. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do have quite a reaction here. And so it's interesting how you uh, talk about this. So you have essentially the more European, Ashkenazi, Jewish, like um, older cast of Israelis who are, you know, tend more liberal from Tel yeah. Aviv. They're protesting about this. And if I understand you right, it's really not so much because they understand and care a lot that this means that when Netanyahu or his successors try a mass expulsion of Palestinians or at least approve, you know, huge, uh, you know, much bigger land grabs in the West Bank and this kind of thing, um, that it's not that they're concerned about that. It's just that they're concerned that the means to allow that is emasculating the Supreme Court, which they considered necessary to protect them on other issues right and then that's the same thing here where you have these i think you're saying where yeah. at least in large I, measure these american liberal jewish zionists are saying that oh no this is terrible the way that they're weakening the supreme court not necessarily because of what it means for the Palestinians, but what it means for Israeli Jews. But then some of them are also saying, well, and of course, this is also so that they can further persecute and humiliate and land rustle from the Palestinians. And so the disgruntlement is extending to that in a beneficial way. Am I understanding you yeah. right there? I think that's true. And I think, I mean, in fairness, in fairness, uh, I can't. I think it, what you're saying is largely true of the Israeli demonstrations. I see very little expression of concern for Palestinians there. It's 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 very Zionist, and that means Jewish supremacists in its emphasis. Those demonstrations, and it's also true that a lot of the expressions of concern and anguish among American Zionist organizations, the Israel lobby has been on basically, you're gonna hurt Israel's image, you're gonna destroy this democracy that is our main way of selling Israel. So some of it's a little bit cynical or pragmatic, but there are also expressions in fairness, there are expressions inside the Israel lobby here of, we know why you're doing this, it's so, it's so to keep Netanyahu's butt out of jail, A, and it's also so you can uh, annex the West Bank. You're 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 slowly annexing the West Bank, and I think, uh, or, or that's happening not even slowly. And so even these centrist Zionists are saying you are destroying the two-state solution. Now, Scott, as you have eloquently, you more than anyone that I can think of to mainstream audiences, have explained what a hoax the two-state solution is. You know that it has been destroyed a long time ago. And um, that that it has just been such a cruel charade to Palestinians that you're going to get a state. Oh, you're going to get a state. Oh, yeah, and that's why you should, as you said, uh, said that's why you should live under Jim Crow, you know, because um, and and apartheid because you're going to get a state. Okay, that is a complete, um, you know, it's a horror show. It's morally and uh, politically, diplomatic, whatever. But 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 to the point, these people, the liberal Zionists are very concerned that this that will be exposed that the fiction of the two states will be exposed and 
You have a cynical liberal Zionist like Tom Friedman saying, well, it was always a fiction, but it was a vital fiction that the Palestinians are going to get a state. What an a-hole, you know? He said he that, huh? Can you, yeah. can you tell me what was the sense before and after that exactly? What is he saying there? You know, I you should go, you know, you're, you're good, at, you're a stickler for quotes, but he said it's a fiction. The Palestinian state was a fiction. <laughs> and he said, in so many words, he said this was a vital fiction. Oh, he said it was in the shared interest of the United States and Israel, that this fiction be purveyed to the world. Unbelievable. Well, I don't think it was, yeah, it was in the Israel's interest, obviously, uh, to purvey that fiction in the world. And, and by fiction, to, to be clear here, Phil, when, when he's saying fiction, he means a lie to the Palestinians. Yes, yes, and, and to the world, a lie, yes, a lie. He was saying, you're, you're right, your outrage is very appropriate here. Tom Friedman, who has a lot of power, was saying, yeah, this was a lie we told that we had to tell. So now you're telling us you knew, always knew it was a lie, that there was going to be no Palestinian state. But the point is, he's very cynical about it. But even if you're not, it's hard not to be cynical about it, because anyone who knows has been there and sees it's a lie. You know, you see Palestinians living under apartheid with no rights, and their land is being taken out from under them. It's as... Uh, many South Africans have said, and I believe even Ban, uh, Ban Ki Moon has said it's worse than apartheid. Okay, so well, maybe he, I'm sorry. I don't. I I, I know that uh, I I've got to be careful. I forget who except many people have said it's worse than apartheid. I don't know. Ban Ki Moon recently said it's apartheid. I don't know if he went that far. But my Desmond point Tutu is, did. Desmond, Desmond Tutu, Tutu said it was yes, worse. There you are. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Worse. Far worse. Okay. So anyone who's been there can see that it's uh, there's not going to be a Palestinian state. But some of these liberal Zionists have been smoking something where they think there's going to be a Palestinian state, and that's vital to a com keeping a Jewish state. And let's just push for a two-state solution. And this government, what it's doing is destroying that hope. Now, John Kerry told us a few years ago, told the mainstream, poof. You know, Israel builds more settlements. Poof, there goes the two-state solution. And he, people came down on him for it. And at the end of his tenure, he said the two-state solution, it's in, you know, it's on the, its deathbed. Well, it's always on its deathbed in the mainstream. But these, and, and as you have pointed out, in the last year or so, more and more mainstream establishment types have been saying it's over. But this judicial reform, which is, uh, Netanyahu has pushed through in order to take more Palestinian lands. It's a big nail in the coffin for everyone to see. And that's why Tom Friedman says, hey, we got to restore the fiction. And that's why liberal Zionists are saying, stop this Netanyahu government. We want a two-state solution. So I think it, I, I've been rambling, but this is, is uh, the, these reforms have been fatal to a critical illusion in the uh, American discourse, fatal to a critical policy of the American government that we want a two-state solution. So it's been, has had political consequences that, that are very important mm -hmm. and I think are actually salutary. Right. Hey guys, Scott here for Leo Hamill Fine Jewelers out of San Diego at JewelryStoreSD.com. They do business nationwide. They sell jewelry and watches, specializing in engagement rings. You know, in case you're in love with somebody. They also specialize in one-of-a-kind vintage and antique jewelry, fully serviced pre-owned fine watches, such as Rolex, Patek, Philippe, Cartier, and any high-end brand. Leos also services high-end watches faster and cheaper than going to a factory service center. Leos takes all the stress out of shopping for jewelry and engagement rings, and always at the right price. They deal nationwide over the phone at 619-299-1500. That's Leo Hamill Fine Jewelers out of San Diego. Go to JewelryStoreSD.com to check out their fine selection and to find out more. Hey, y'all, you should sign up for my Substack. It's ScottHortonShow.Substack.com. And if you do that, you'll get the interviews a day before everybody else. But not only that, they'll be free of commercials. How do you like that? Pretty good, huh? ScottHortonShow.Substack.com. Hey, y'all, LibertasBella.com is where you get Scott Horton Show and Libertarian Institute shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, and stickers and things, including the great Top Lobsters designs as well. See, that way it says on your shirt why you're so smart. Libertas Bella, from the same great folks who bring you Ammo.com for all your ammunition needs, too. 
That's LibertasBella.com. So this is the, the big deal. Uh, in This always happens, right, as Condoleezza Rice and Rahm Emanuel agree, out of crisis comes opportunity. <laughs> Um, it's uh, anti-war yeah. radio. We're talking with Phil Weiss here about the great crack up over Israel moving another full step or two to the right as American liberal Jews, mostly Zionists, decide whether they're going to stay Zionists or whether they're going to stay liberal. Phil. So we talked a great little point. bit about um, about uh, Thomas Friedman, and of course, he's yeah. an important bellwether on all of these things. Um, yeah. and I'm sure he's written quite a bit about this lately, but you have a couple of really thorough articles at MondoWeiss.net where you go through, you talk about J Street, the ADL, mm-hmm. APAC, yeah. and all the different, you know, the American Jewish this, that, and the other thing. There must be a million of them, right? Yeah, there are um, a million of them. And, yeah. um, and they're vital to the Democratic Party. I mean, and some of the and, biggest names too, Martin Indyk and Aaron David Miller and, and David Rothkop. So please take the floor against Philip Weiss for MondaWeiss.net. Tell us about, in specific here, if you can cite some of these examples of these more important groups and writers and, and um, apparatchiks about how they're reacting to this. And I guess we'll talk about Congress after that. Well, I think that to your point, you stated, you framed it so beautifully when you said you get to be liberal or you get to be a Zionist at this point. And I think that is an understanding that is pervading the Israel lobby right now, that Israel has gone so far right. It's always been right, far right. It's always been Jewish supremacist. But the the cladding, uh, the, 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 um, the screens have fallen off now and you the the emperor is naked for the world to see it's a right wing extremist racist government it is a racist state as jamila uh, pramila jayapal a uh, congresswoman from washington state said at net roots this is a racist state she had to swallow her words but this is what everyone is seeing and so for the israel lobby which has been so critical the jewish israel lobby to the democratic party supporting uh, the uh, uh, making the American uh, the Democratic Party so pro-Israel. Within that those organizations, there is a crisis. You can't be a liberal and a Zionist at the same time. Now, some of these people are just going to choose Zionism. Tom Friedman will choose Zionism. You mentioned David Rothkopf. He's at the formerly the uh, at the um, editor of Foreign Policy magazine, kind of a leading foreign policy figure. I mean, and he's he a real Hillary a Clinton guy, right? Yeah, yeah, and he said it's a racist state. Let's admit it; it's a racist state. Yeah. And well, so talk more about I, him, would you please? Because he was formerly the editor of Foreign Policy, and then I think yeah. he was a registered agent for Qatar or Bahrain or one of those for a yeah, while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah, yeah. big time he, establishment guy here, yeah. and he went off yeah. about this in the Daily Beast. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good that he did it. He's a little bit of an independent guy these days uh, and, and less establishment than he used to be. But he, he roomed with uh, uh, Michael Oren, uh, the Israeli ambassador, when he was at Columbia. He was good friends of him. And, you know, he's stuck by Israel through thick and thin. He denounced the Israel lobby. And in recent years, he's just had enough. And I think what is significant is that He's a he's a, he was a so he was a soldier in this Israel lobby, as far as I'm concerned, uh, in terms of maintaining American support for Israel. And he said, screw it. It's a racist state. And that kind of epiphany, I think, is vital and is going to be happening more and more. You mentioned Martin Indyk and Dan Kurtzer, these uh, former ambassadors to Israel, who said, let's stop funding Israel. Let's stop uh, supporting it with aid. That's huge. One of, you know, it was anti-Semitic to say that we should stop giving money to Israel because it's, uh, you know, of, of its policies towards Palestinians. They haven't quite gone that far to say it's because of policy to, toward Palestinians, but they're saying cut off the aid. Only the squad was saying cut off the aid. Only Bernie Sanders were saying cut off their condition the aid. And now this is a ma- becoming a mainstream position because of this fascistic government. And because of what it's done to uh, for Israeli quote unquote Jewish democracy, not because of what it's done for Palestinians, but the Palestinian situation is in there too. So it's all been good, and it's creating a crisis inside the Israel lobby. And J Street, which is at the center of this, um, you know, condemns Jayapal for saying it's a racist state. Terrible that a, a J Street does that. Then says. Um, 
that uh, it, it suggests that she was anti, that, that the demonstrators who were, who, to whom Jaipal said this at Netroots, the demonstrators were anti-Semitic because they were um, demonstrating against Jan Schakowsky, a Jewish congresswoman from Illinois, a totally irresponsible statement by J Street. So there it goes, being a, a basically right-wing Zionist and saying any criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic. That's what it said about BDS when there was a bill in Congress. Uh, BDS is anti-Semitic. So you have these liberal Zionists who are expressing right-wing Zionist opinion, and you have right-wing Zionists who are expressing kind of liberal Zionist opinion. It's all a mess in there, and there's a crisis brewing because their own kids hate the place. Their own kids say Israel doesn't have a right to exist. 20% of young Jews say it doesn't have a right to exist. Some large number. 40% say it's an apartheid state of young Jews. So their own kids inside the Israel lobby are saying, I don't want to go visit that apartheid state. I don't want to go on birthright. I don't want to support it. It's an apartheid state. And so that is, the, that is essentially the crisis. And happily, it will have political dimensions. Yeah, it really is interesting here that in a way all we're talking about is the change from de facto to de jure here. Great Israel point. seized the Great West point. Bank in 1967. Great point. Right? Yes. Yes. Um it's just now we're talking about again the end of the illusion. Will the yes. Palestinians ever have independence? No, they no. will not. So then they the question will is will they have freedom or not? And the Israeli answer is no, they will not. You know, right. they, they're stealing all this land, but they're stealing all the people who live on it, too. And what's to become of them, Great Phil? Point. It's horrible to consider. I mean, it, there's ethnic cleansing going on now, as you state. I mean, that people are being pushed out of their communities. They're being collectivized in these Bantu stands in the West Bank, and it's done on a strictly racial basis. And the Jews who live in the West Bank have complete freedom and are treated as citizens of Israel in what is supposed to be a Palestinian state, and there are 700,000 of them, which is now such a significant portion of the Israeli population that their security needs, quote unquote security needs, are prioritized in the government. They, the government has been taken over by these settlers who have an urgent security need. And, you know, what is going to happen is that as, as even centrist, there's going to be a civil war there at some point. And what that war consists of is, is hard to imagine, but these forces are in complete opposition and there may we're already seeing some Jew versus Jew uh, conflict within Israel and it could become violent. And ultimately, you know, the settlers who have an apartheid vision versus those who believe that Israel is a democracy, they are going to have to work that out, and I don't see how it gets worked out without uh, some violence. But I could – I mean that's really the question, right? They got the land. The question is can they build a railroad across the Jordan River? That's the plan ultimately, and you quote someone in one of these pieces saying, look, that's what the Supreme Court thing is all about is yeah, so that they yeah. can legalize the mass expulsion of what's left of the Palestinian people on the West Bank there. I don't know the Israeli discourse well enough to know where expulsion is in there. I mean, transfer, which is expulsion of Palestinians, say to Jordan, uh, that or transfer of Palestinians inside Israel, where they're supposedly citizens, into these bantustans. Those ideas are expressed. Certainly, annexation of large portions of the West Bank with the forced expulsion of villages and stuff into other portions of the West Bank, that is openly discussed by these this right-wing government. Mm -hmm. And it's terrifying. And the fact is that the uh, Israel lobby has supported the uh, Israeli government again and again over the last 50 years of occupation. And that's why we are, you know, the, Israel never faced consequences with for this when there was a, a UN resolution, Security Council resolution in 2016 saying that the settlements are a flagrant violation of human rights, of Palestinian rights, which is a bald assertion of fact, not even saying Israel's a racist state, just this is a flagrant violation. You know, the U.S. did the amazing, powerful uh, thing of abstaining and allowing that to go through when Obama was a lame duck. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Trump did everything he could, you know, to try to uh, to block that resolution, even though he was just the president elect at that point. 
And yet that resolution went through. That's as much courage as we have ever been allowed to see on the part of the U.S. government about what is an apartheid state. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right now, when uh, Pramila Jayapal says it's a racist state, there's a 412 to 9 resolution against her in the Congress. And Hakeem Jeffries is going back to Israel for the second time this year. Well, so that's the real crack up here, too, is where even... Young evangelicals and young American Jews are turning away from Israel. And not just that, but as we've been talking about, these very important establishmentarians and these important Jewish yes. groups, Zionist groups yes. in America are turning yes. away. Yeah, APAC rules Congress and they're with Likud. And that's the iron law of the rest of our lives, right? Well, I think it's more than just APAC. I think it's, you know, yesterday I quoted Susie Gelman of the Israel Policy Forum you know, uh, who says, let's can't, there's a hope, it's terrible what's happening, but let's wait for the better Israeli uh, government to come back. It may be a while, but let's just hope and let's just wait. She gave $400,000 to, you know, Biden re-election committee in the last uh, few months. So, and, and she has the president's ear. So she's at the Israel Policy Forum. There are many organizations. APAC is, um, you know, sort of, uh, supportive of Republicans now and uh, but, and some Democrats, but there are many organizations that are supporting Israel right or wrong now, uh, e- even even in spite of these changes. So, and J Street, in its criticism, here's a liberal Zionist organization inside the Democratic Party, and its criticism of Israel is fairly muted, even uh, in these desperate times. So, I think right now the 2024 election. Uh, Biden is really worried that he's going to lose portions of the Israel lobby, lose uh, portions of that war chest to uh, the Republicans. And he is do- he's doubling down. He is being very uncritical of Israel. All right, you guys, we're all out of time, unfortunately. But that is the great Phil Weiss at MondoWeiss.net. Check out his great article. New Israeli law is shock to U.S. Zionists who fear break with American Jews. Really appreciate your time on the show again, Phil. Thanks, man. It was a pleasure. All right, you guys, and that's it for Anti-War Radio for today. I'm your host, Scott Horton. Find the full interview archive at scotthorton.org. Follow me on Twitter at Scott Horton Show. And I am here every Thursday from 2.30 to 3 on KPFK 90.7 FM in L.A. See you next week. Thank you.